I cannot believe I'm about to say this, but I think I'm starting to like Jack again. Hey everybody, welcome to Lil on Lost, this is episode 13, The Last Recruit. At first I did not like this episode that much, um, after re-watching it again today, I've started to like it a little bit better. I just think it's a crappy way of having the two week break until the next Lost episode, that they left it with what they did. I thought maybe they would say a little bit more, but hey, what are you going to do? So we start off in the 2007 timeline where Flock and Jack go and have their little catch-up talk over behind where the group is. Uh, Jack has a few questions for him. He wants to know first thing is why did he pick John Locke? Uh, Flock goes on to say it's because he was, you know, he was a sucker. He was the only one who believed in nothing and then he, when he was brought back dead, that was his advantage to take him and use his body to do what he's doing right now. Jack's second question was is that on the third day of Jack being on the island, he saw his father, and he wanted to know if that was Flock as well. Flock was going to say, yeah, that was, that was him, and that he wanted to show Jack water so he could survive. There's something about being right with loss that you just feel so accomplished with. I think it just goes down to there's so many theories and so many ideas that when you actually get something right, you feel really good about yourself. I totally called that Flock was a Christian Shepherd this whole time. I said from the beginning in one of my earlier videos that Flock takes over anybody who's dead on the island. If John Locke was dead, took advantage. Same thing with Alex, same thing with uh, Mr. Echo's brother, same thing with Christian Shepherd. You know, some people said that it was Jacob doing some of those, but Jacob doesn't like to manipulate. And I knew, I had a really good feeling that Jacob wasn't any of those. I'm glad we finally figured that out too. So Locke and Jack are walking and they hear Claire come in. Uh, Claire actually tells Jack that he, she's very relieved to see Jack because she hasn't had any family of any kind in a really long time. And, you know, we know that Jack and Claire are brothers, so she feels really happy to see him. And then she goes on to say, you know, that you're on his side now, whether you like it or not, because he talked to you. And I think Jack's going on to say, like, to himself, like, I don't think so. You know, I, I'm my own person. Jack's way stronger than these other people, way stronger than Claire, like, mentally. I think Jack's going to be okay. The whole him staying on Flock's side... It's not going to happen. So fake Tina Fey shows up and tells Flock that he has until nightfall to return it. I don't understand why they're not referring to Desmond as a person, but to return it or they're going to blow them up. And she, you know, she thinks she's all hot and tough when she's actually really weird. And then Flock goes, all right, then here we go. It's begun. And I guess this is the start of the war. Meanwhile, all this is happening. Sawyer and Hurley are talking. Sawyer lets Hurley know that he wants to get away from Flock as far as possible. He doesn't trust them. He's going to go to Widmore, he wants to get on a submarine, and he wants to get the hell off this island. Uh, when given the opportunity to, Flock tells Sawyer to go get this boat, and then that's Sawyer's plan to take everybody who he wants, put him on this boat, and then go to Charles Widmore. Uh, he decides he doesn't want to take Claire because Claire has lost the mind, and he doesn't want to take Saeed because Saeed's gone from the dark side. Although Hurley's like, dude, look at Anakin, he came back. Awesome Star Wars reference, but it's true, you can't bring back Saeed now. Meanwhile, all this is happening, Flock tells Saeed to go finish the job on Desmond. He goes to the well, points the gun at him, and before anything happens, Desmond wants to know a reason why he's going to shoot him. If he's going to shoot him cold blood, he might as well have a reason why. And Saeed goes to say that he can bring back the person that he loved, which was Nadia. And Desmond goes, what are you going to tell the person that you loved how you got them back? And then Saeed just kind of stares at him. I mean, he's emotionless. He's kind of been emotionless throughout the last, like, nine episodes. And then he goes on to tell Flock that he finished the job and killed him. But he definitely did not kill Desmond, okay? Desmond is a main character in the show. If they're going to show him dying, they're actually going to show his death. They're not going to say that he died. So Jack Lapita's son and Hurley meet up with Sawyer and Kate. They're about to get on this boat, and Claire follows them. God, Claire is so annoying. Claire follows them, and then Kate gives her this little speech saying, You know, I came back to the island for you. I want you to go home so you can help raise Aaron. I should have never raised Aaron in the first place. But then again, you know, if it wasn't for Kate, who knows what would have happened to Aaron. I mean, Aaron might have been dead. He might have been left on the island and would have been this jungle monkey that lived with Claire. It wasn't a good situation for Aaron. I don't think Kate should be sorry for raising Aaron in the first place. So Claire decides to join him. And before she gets on the boat, she says, you know, he's going to be mad, meaning Flock. No crap he's going to be mad that they left. What do you think? He's going to be all happy? Come on. Obvious, Claire. Obvious. They're all just hanging out, they're going to the Hydra Island, and then Sawyer talks with Jack, and Jack lets Sawyer know that their purpose is to be on this island. Sawyer does not like his answer, he hasn't been home in three years, he wants to get the hell off this island, and he tells Jack to jump off, and Jack does. 
And then Kate's like, we have to go back. Just like Jack did when he yelled at Kate when back in the end of season three. I just found that a little funny. So Jack makes it to the shore, and who's waiting for him there? Flock. And I'll get back to what happened in 2007 a little bit. So back in the 2004 timeline, Sun and Locke arrive at the hospital pretty much at the exact same time. Uh, when Sun sees Locke, she says, it's him, it's him. I'm wondering if she's saying it's him, it's him, because she recognized him from the plane, or if it was either, maybe she knows about this other timeline that we don't know yet. We also know that Sawyer and Kate are at the police station, and Sawyer is interrogating Kate. Uh, I don't think there's any connection between those two. Like we know, like with Hurley and Libby, how they had a connection, they remembered stuff, and as Libby saw Hurley through a TV screen, that's how she got her connection. I don't think Sawyer and Kate have the connection. I still think it's Jack and Kate. I still think Sawyer, when he sees Juliet, they'll have that connection. Um, you know, Sawyer's still hitting on Kate, even though it's a different timeline. Nothing's really changed between the two. So now we see that Claire enters this really, really big building, and she's going to an adoption agency. Uh, all of a sudden, we see Stalker Desmond come up from behind there. He talks to her and lets her know that maybe she should go see one of his lawyer friends, and it won't cost her anything, just that way she doesn't get, you know, like, taken advantage of. Uh, she says fine, and as she goes into this uh, agency with Desmond, it's Ilana. And, you know, it's like, wow, it's a oh, great, Ilana's a lawyer now. And uh, it's actually a really big coincidence because Ilana is trying to get in contact with Claire for so long and she wasn't able to because of Christian Shepard dying. So it's like one big triangle. I don't think Desmond did that purposely though. I think it was just Desmond's uh, thing to help Claire, not to get her to meet Ilana for the whole Laura thing. I really don't think it's that. I think, I mean, I, we all know that Desmond's still trying to play the Cupid thing and trying to get this timeline together, but I don't think it involves anything with Christian or Jack. So Jack and his son David go to the same place where Claire is. Uh, he sees Claire, meets her for the first time, and finds that Claire is his sister. He gets a little upset. I guess the simple fact that his father cheated on his mom. He winds up getting an emergency phone call saying that he has to come in to operate on this guy. And when he gets over there, he finds out the person he's operating on is the same guy who he's on the plane with, who he gave a car to during the first episode, which is John Locke. We also find out at the hospital that son's going to be okay, and that the baby's going to be okay too. Jin goes on to comfort her, saying that it's all over, and that they're going to live happily ever after, and it seems it's going to be that way. So now in 2007, Sora and all of them arrive on the Hydra Island, uh, we see the fake Tina Fey points a gun, you know, he's like, oh, it's me, it's me, you know, he's like, alright, drop your weapons. And then the moment finally comes. The last two seasons that we've been waiting for, Jin and Sun finally meet up again. I was so happy for them. And we also see that Sun got her voice back. I guess another uh, evidence showing that love is all you need, like I said last episode. All of a sudden, Zoe gets a message from Whitmore, and she points the guns back at Sawyer, and tells him to all go on their knees, and she's gonna take him prisoner. I guess what happened was, is that because Desmond didn't get returned, they're pissed off, they might be thinking that Sawyer and all of them are against Woodmore and them, so I can see why Charles Woodmore is doing what he's doing. As soon as he gets all of them, he sends a missile over to where Flock and Jack are. So Jack and a few others get blown up really high in the air. Jack doesn't get any limbs or anything taken off, he's okay, but he's just dazed like he was at the end of Season 5 when he got hit in the head with the metal thing. Uh, Flock picks him up, lays him against a tree, and lets him know that everything's going to be okay because he's with him now. Not going to happen, okay? He's with him now because he's next to him, not because he's joining his army. That's not going to happen. You know, I was convinced a few episodes ago that it wasn't going to be Jack to be the one on this island, but after Jack's talk with Sawyer and what's going on right now, I really don't think Jack is going to leave the island. I think he is going to be the one that replaced Jacob. And it makes sense it would be Jack right now anyway. So in two weeks, the episode is entitled The Candidate. I'm so mad it's not next week. You know, you have to wait two weeks for a show. It feels like it's a month. I hate that when that happens. So just by the title alone, The Candidate, I'm assuming we're going to find out who THE Candidate is. There's not going to be no more other candidates. We're going to find out exactly who it is and who is going to replace Jacob. Also, because there is no loss next week, I don't want to go a whole week without making a video. So I'm going to post a link right here to a video that I'm just going to make right now. And it's going to be about questions that you might have on the show and maybe possible things that I'm going to do once Lost ends. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Rate, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you guys in two weeks.